Good morning, good morning, family. Glad to have you all here. For those that you don't know me, my name is Adam. I am the husband of Jamie Tall. And today we're going to be discussing depression and mental health during the holidays. You know, sometimes with the holidays nearing, we're about a week away from Christmas. It can be definitely challenging because we have so many tasks, so many obstacles to deal with on top of being in recovery, on top of chasing our sobriety. So today I want to touch base on depression during the holidays, as well as mental health during the holidays. If you're in this live broadcast, it is January or December 19th, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Give us a shout out in the comments. Let us know where you're viewing from. My mental health during the holidays is so sensitive, right? So I'm not really talking to my grandmother or my father, and it's caused a little bit of abandonment issues. For those that don't know me personally, I am Jamie Tall's husband, Adam, and it's a pleasure to meet y'all. So my mom actually abandoned me at two years old and left me at a Salvation Army in Lakeland, Florida, from Southwest Florida, Fort Myers to be specific. Her and my dad broke up and she left me at a Salvation Army when I was two years old. I've been holding on to that abandonment issue for so long that when it comes time for the holidays, it really messes with me. And then I also get depressed. I actually just came out of a serious depression. Me and my wife were sort of kind of going at it, right? And man, is it easy to get depressed? Y'all know that y'all know that deep dark place in your head that's easy to get to and hard to get out of? That's the place I visited in. Hey, Jamie, glad to have you here from Northern Kentucky. For y'all that are just joining us, we're going to be discussing depression and mental health during the holidays. Does anybody else suffer from depression or mental health, especially during the holidays? We've been getting we've been getting so much feedback from others that are struggling. So how does somebody in recovery deal with their mental health? How does somebody in recovery deal with their depression? Uh, we got Megan uh, from Massachusetts, got got to love that autocorrect. Siri is not my best friend whatsoever. I'll be telling her, blah, 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 blah. And then you look at it, it's crazy. Does anybody else suffer from depression, right? During the holidays? Like I'm depressed. Like, so for those that haven't seen any of my live videos, we'll be doing many more lives as I return to the studio full time, uh, pending repairs of my ribs. I broke a bunch of ribs. It's so easy to get depressed, right? How do we not be depressed, right? Like it's Christmas time. I'm not working. Um, I got to buy my wife this very nice gift. I hope she's not watching so she can hear what she's getting. It's just so much different stuff. And then with my mental health on top of it, because I'm an addict, right? Or I was an addict. I really don't claim I'm an addict anymore. No disrespect to any programs, but Adam the addict was the old me. So I'm trying to focus on the new me. Um, looks like Stacy suffers with it too. My buddy, Austin, big shout out, Austin, man, Austin, you've been down for a long time. We're talking about depression and mental health during the holidays. What is some of the things that y'all suffer with? Some of the things that y'all are dealing with, how does one overcome depression and mental health in the holidays? Like, so for me personally, I've been working a lot on prayer, right? Um, my wife is huge in her faith for those that don't follow her or, or just now recently following her. So she's guiding me into my faith. And sometimes I have to give the stuff that I can't control to a higher power, right? It's up to you. Good morning. What's up? Big shout out. Shine and morning. Dem Dilly. I was in rehab for a year and a half and I'm fighting both right now with trust in Jesus. Just got told we're not working for a week and a half and I'm fine with that vacation brother or sister, I'm, I'm right there with you, right? Fighting with both, right? And then not working, you know, I'm not working because of my broken ribs right now. So like I'm sitting here and don't get me wrong, I can make content for days. We're going to be continuously doing these content, get ready for lives to occur much more often. But it still leaves me depressed, right? I'm from Florida where the sun shines and it's like 41 degrees and it's gray and nasty outside here in uh, Northern Georgia, not necessarily today. <clears throat> so how do you get through your depression and your anxiety? Do you talk to Jesus? Do you work a program of recovery? 
Stacy says, honestly, praying and listening to the Bible on audio Bible and Christian music helped me. Stacy, thank you so much for sharing. I am right there with you. You know, that Bible was a big, scary book for me not too long ago, right? Uh, we actually started watching The Chosen. Has anybody else seen The Chosen? Season three just started. We were walking, or we were walking, we were watching season three, episode two of The Chosen yesterday. And Matthew, um, you know, one of the followers of Jesus um, was getting set out. I think he was with Simon, right? Because Jesus had all the followers go out in each direction, two by two to spread the gospel. And he talks to Matthew. Matthew's really worried in this part. And he's like, you know, I'm scared to what is to come, right? I am nervous. I have anxiety, which for me personally leads to depression and mental health. And in the chosen, Jesus said to him that you must go out and you must show faith to the unbelievers. And that whole believer unbeliever thing, I was like, man, y'all are being, y'all are being picky, huh? But what the reference in the chosen was to if we are suffering from a lot of unhealed pain, if we're holding on to a lot of trauma, a lot of resentments, a lot of unfulfilled things that we try to do in our life, that can sometimes hinder us in our faith. So Jesus sent Matthew and Simon out to go preach the gospel, right? But it's the people that have the hurt hearts that sometimes don't want to believe. And I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking about myself right now. I, it was like a mind blowing moment. Psh, you know what I mean? I suffer from so much hurt. I suffer because my mom left me at a Salvation Army. I suffer because my dad chose a bag of dope or a piece of crack cocaine versus me and my wife, Jamie Tall's wedding because he's in Southwest Florida and he's sick. I'm exceptionally hurt. Right. And only until I start healing that hurt can I start becoming a better version of myself. Y'all get in the comment box. Let me know. How do you deal with depression and mental health during the holidays? Ariel, let go and let God. Six years clean and still battling depression. What I find that helps me is affirmations. Reminding myself how far I've come and writing it all down and what I have to be grateful for. Yes, gratitude for me is is so important. You know, they were talking. I went to a um, like a recovery get together um, and one of the speaker was was talking about. Do you count the little blessings? Or are you so wrapped up in the day to day or your your brain is so attached to a big blessing, a task, a goal, an achievement, what somebody thinks of you, what somebody says about you? For me, when she mentioned that we sometimes forget our little blessings, it like blew me away, man. And this was Friday. They're laying hands on me. This lady's talking in tongues. When I first seen all this stuff, I'm like, where am I? Is this stuff real? But then I started doing my own research within the Bible. So this lady laid hands on me and she prayed for me. And man, I just cried and cried and cried. This was Friday. This was three days ago as me and Jamie Tall were coming out of a, a tad bit of um, conflict between each other. You know, we come from a point of depression, anxiety and mental health. And sometimes that oversees our marriage. Right. So we start saying things that aren't nice to one another. We start being mean to one another. And where does that really get you? Right. So we went to counseling. Um, we're in marriage counseling, couples therapy we're, we're consistently trying to evolve so that we can be a better version of ourselves and our counselor yesterday was saying that we're up here a heightened hypersensitive way of communication and i come from the hood i come from the streets to where you want to try me oh i got something for you bro type mentality i have to leave that mentality out of my marriage because if i allow that depression, anxiety, and mental health of the hood rat gangster get into my life. Sometimes me and Jamie Tall, we be going at it and she don't even mean it, right? She's actually crying out for help, but it leads us, hey, Michael, glad to have you here, but it leads us to having anxiety and depression. So the lady prayed for me and I just really started praying more. Like anybody that knows me personally knows that I'm not really a huge person in prayer. Like it's hard for me to believe in something I can't see, hear, feel, touch, know that's in existence. But yet, God's been so good to me. I'm not counting my little blessings. What do y'all think? Ariel, focus on what you have 
and not what you don't have. Remember the days you thought to yourself, that will never be me or I can't do this. And then reflect on how much your life has changed. Yes, I used to pray for the situations I'm in. Then I get in them situations and I'm mad because I stopped counting my little blessings. I'm mad because I'm suffering with depression. I'm mad because I'm suffering with anxiety from the holidays. I'm mad because my mommy left me when I was two. I'm mad because my daddy's still out there in the streets. I'm mad because my grandmother sent me this one page essay of how a piece of shit I was the day before I got married as neither one of them made it to my wedding or our wedding, me and Jamie Tulls. Hey, real quick, as you can see, we're scrolling on the bottom. If y'all have not subscribed to Jamie Tall on YouTube, please do so. Um, all of our Facebook friends, it's an honor and a privilege to have you. Facebook is currently giving away this thing that they call stars. So you have the option to um, donate free stars. Typically they cost, but Facebook is providing a bunch of free stars until the end of the year. So if you want to support the channel in any way, consider sending us some stars. It's not a must. You can stay here forever and not send anything ever. And we're really glad to have you here. Does anybody else suffer with suffer with depression? Does anybody else suffer with mental health? Like what's some of the what's some of the ways for us to get out of our mental health? I found this not too long ago. When you get into a tight place and it seems like you can't go on, hold on. For that, for that's just the place and the time when the tide will turn. You know, that's a reference to the darkest, the darkest time of the night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. At the exact moment when the sun and the moon are in circulation in orbit, and it's the darkest time of the night is actually the moment that things start to become brighter, it's things that start to become better. You know, I went to church yesterday and we were talking about uh they were talking about the Romans and how they awarded Christmas and why they determined that day. So December 25th. And the preacher man was explaining that that's actually the darkest day of the year. I think they call it the winter solstice, right? And the winter solstice, it's the darkest day. But we celebrate Jesus's um, presence and essence and characteristics and attributes that I'm trying to become a better version of. So light from Jesus comes in the darkest time of the day. Let's see here. Jesse, I've been struggling. I don't know if it's the holidays or what. Jesse, you are not alone. I've been struggling too. Jamie Tall has been struggling. Hence us being on here right now talking about it, right? It's okay to struggle. Just don't quit. And that's easier said than done when you're in that deep, dark place in your head that's easy to get to and hard to get out of, right? How does one muster up faith and courage and strength to keep going? For me, I have to start counting my little blessings, right? I am home with my son, which you can't see because I have this amazing background. By the way, this ain't our house. Um, this is just a digital background. I got my son with me today. He's going to start helping us with the content because we are growing at fast rates. Thanks to folks like y'all. And we just can't keep up me and my, me and my wife. How is some, mm, what's some of the ways that y'all deal with mental health and depression? Get in the comments and let me know. I do make the mistakes of not counting them, but I'm currently just letting everything go to be with the person that wants to show my true appreciation. That's awesome. Uh, to attempt to build more relationships. I need to work on building more relationships. So I come from Southwest Florida. I got trust issues because everybody wanted to turn me in for the reward or talk to the feds on a federal indictment. And I just don't trust anybody. So we go to counseling yesterday and uh, the I think he's a therapist, therapist or counselor or whatever. Um, He's talking to me and he's like, Adam, tell me about your, tell me about your healthy outlets. Tell me about your safe places. And I'm sitting here like this. And I'm like, damn dog. I don't really have a healthy outlet. I really don't have a safe place right now up here. I've been up here in Athens, Georgia for about two years and I got a hard time trusting people, right? Does anybody else have a hard time with trust? But depression and mental health during during the holidays. Tough times last. Tough times never last. 
and tough people do. You have to work on your mental toughness when you are suffering from depression and mental health during the holidays. For me, it was prayer. Like I really can't say it any other way. I neglected to pray. I neglected to believe. I didn't really even want to believe in the beginning. Giselle, uh, when I started counting my blessings, God met me. He said there are countless, even in the dark places. Those dark places got me where I'm at today. God wastes absolutely nothing. I love it. Let's talk about that a little bit. When we start counting our blessings, like are we really, and I'm talking to everybody, including myself, right? When I say all this stuff to y'all, I, I clearly need to practice what I preach as well. Do we really count our blessings every day? Like there's so many, right? But the thing is we take this thing we call life for granted. We're mad because some peckerhead got in the comments and said something about something. That's not counting the little blessings. The blessing is having my hands work and my ability to get online and, and talk to amazing people like y'all. He said they are countless, even in dark places. Blessings come in dark places. My biggest blessings came to me in the darkest places. Whew, man, my biggest blessing in my dark place came to me inside of jail facing heroin charge and a bunch of other charges, felony charges in Florida. And I remember the very first time I talked to God in a couple of years, it looked a little bit something like this. God, I don't even know if I'm doing this right, but I'm in jail on a felony charge. And I promise you, if you get me out of here, I'm going to do something for myself and I'm going to help others. And after not long, God got me out of there. It was on a bunch of contingencies for probation and just the blessings are everywhere. You have to submerge yourself in what is good. Try your best not to submerge yourself in all that is bad. Let's see. We got Jesse in the house. I'm sober, but I feel close to the edge. I have no friends and being First Nations is hard. I need to get into some meetings. Not all of the good groups opened back up since COVID. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Jesse, thank you so much for sharing. I get close to the edge all the time, right? It's so easy sometimes to get to the edge, right? And then the no friends thing, like, I don't know about your situation, sister, but I don't trust people, right? Like I have serious trust issues. So I have to work on my own personal trust issues to actually open up because my trust issues in others actually sometimes hinder my marriage. Like, I just don't trust people, man. Like you got to be, you got to be solid for me to want to even mess with you. You know, my wife consistently tells me you should go to church and talk to a man of God and tell him all this stuff. But I'm like, so what? So dude can gossip about me when I, when I run around the corner, like, I think I'm in my own way. What do y'all think? Am I in my own way? Adjust that camera. Let's see. Shauna, I have horrible times with my depression. Totally normal, totally normal. But let's collectively, if, if we can, over the next 10 or 15 minutes, let's see if we can work on a couple things that other people do to deal with their depression. Like, how do you deal with your depression? A lot of us say pray. You know, for me, I have to give it to God. I have to, I have to pray to Jesus because sometimes I can't handle the full load, right? The weight of the world is unbearable on me because I'm freaking out. I got anxiety. I'm depressed. I'm having mental health issues. Oh my God, it's Christmas. I just burnt through X amount of dollars. Rent's due in like five days. We got to go to her mom's and hang out there for like two days straight, which is cool. But at the end of the two days, I'm ready to return home. So all this stuff, all this stuff is, is something. Uh, Jesse, yes, tomorrow isn't promised. Yes, tomorrow is never promised. You know, I heard an analogy when I was in jail in one of the very first 12 step program or 12 step meeting programs I had ever had. I went to this dude. He was the speaker. He came in from the outside. I'm like, I forget what his name was, Brian. Right. I said, Brian, man, I'm worried. I'm worried about what tomorrow has. I'm, I'm anxious about tomorrow. And then it leads me to think about all the bad stuff that I did that led me to this incarceration, to these felonies, to all this charge, all that I'm dealing with. And this guy in the 12 step meeting, Brian, Gave me some of the best advice ever. You want to know what it, that advice was? He says, Adam, 
if you got one foot into tomorrow and you have one foot into yesterday, you're going to piss all over today. And today is all that we have. So tomorrow isn't promised. Let's try to focus on today. Let's not focus on what is to come. Let's not focus on the maybe. The rent's going to be due when the rent's going to be due. The, the work situation, my ribs. I mean, I've been out for four weeks. I'm looking at like another four weeks, two months, no income. Thank God that I worked real hard and counted my small blessings in the summer. Um, thanks for sharing, Jesse. Glad to have you here. Um, Giselle, yes. Ariel, don't say F it. Get out of that mentality. Trust me. I know it's hard. I was the queen of F it. When I stopped saying F it and I started facing my troubles head on and finding solutions, cognitive thinking, changing the way of thinking. Yes, you have to change your perception. That's the reason we do this, this content. That's the reason that we're out here trying to help people. That's the reason that I'm going to start jumping on lives every single day. I am not here to change the way you think. I merely want to challenge the way that you think because sometimes we're so stuck in depression and mental health issues. I refer to it as the pity party, right? I'm on the pity party. I'm on the pity potty, having a pity party. Oh, poor me. Why me? Right? Not counting my blessings. Having a pity party does nothing for the advancement. That is not cognitive thinking as Ariel mentioned for a, for a positive outcome. Thanks for sharing. Jesse, so happy for you, Jamie Tall, and your family. Jesse, thank you guys so much. I see we got a handful of Facebook people and a handful of YouTube people. If you have found us on Facebook, please find us on YouTube. Where is it at? There it is. Subscribe to Jamie Tall on YouTube. YouTube people, find us on Facebook. And don't forget, if there is an option for stars and you can donate the free stars that don't cost you anything, consider sending them our way. And if not, we're glad to have you regardless. Candace Smith, pray. That's it. Pray. I think I'm going to pray for us um, at the end of this live here in about 10 or so more minutes. I'm going to start coming on every single morning about this time within reason so that we can do a collective group, go live and pray. You can also find my wife um, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the amazing Sonia John Sonia Johnson. Um, we're actually going down there to do a collaboration in Sarasota. We're looking forward to getting out of this freaking cold weather up here in the great state of Georgia. Christy, I have bad anxiety and depression. You're not alone, Christy. That's the that's one of the main reasons Jamie had me touch on this subject. So my wife, the night before, is going to start giving me a subject to speak on, and then we're going to do a live every thirty minutes. So this is actually pre or this is actually a live video so if you're seeing this and it's a replay just get in the comments and type replay jesse i'm lucky i know that letting myself get to that point with the efforts i've come a long way yes oh man i'm trying to work on that right like march 11th 2016 um pushing seven years into my recovery journey i personally am cali sober i'm a firm believer in the medical marijuana um, plant and cannabinoids, which we'll save for a different subject. But when I get into that effort, right? Like me and me and Jamie Tall was going at it, right? Because she's coming from a point of hurt. I'm coming from a point of hurt. And the last thing a husband and wife needs to discuss at the exact same time up here at an elevated point of frustration is how bad we hurt. Because all we want to do at some point, once you get cut, you sort of kind of want to bleed on people, right? And we're not perfect, right? We're far from perfect, which is why we're on here talking about stuff like this. So many people on social want to show you their highlights. So many people on the gram want to take a picture in front of the jet that they jumped over the fence to get to, right? Me and Jamie Tall, we're just coming from an authentic, transparent point of view on the chance that this content might just maybe help somebody someday. So we're glad to have you all here. Giselle, rest is a gift. Yes. Rest, relaxation. For me, I got to take a nap. My wife, she will never take a nap. She will go two months working all day, every day from sunup to sundown before she can actually wear herself out. I don't know if it's a guy thing. I don't know if it's a girl thing, but rest for me is a very, very, very important gift. Around 13 years ago, I was fearful and 
and I'm attempting not to be that way anymore. Sending prayers for healing, brother. Yes, fearful. Let's talk about fearful, a fear response. If y'all are just joining us, we're going to be touching on depression, mental health um, during the holidays. I operate in fear. Like I went to the counseling. Remember me and Jamie Tall were in marriage counseling. We go like, I don't even know, once every three weeks to this guy. Um, she's doing some private stuff. I'm going to start doing some private stuff just to, to continuously work on myself. We have to heal, right? Healing is so important. But man, once you get that effort mentality, you know what I mean? Like, I'm ready to run away. I'm ready to move back from Florida. I'm ready to, to dissolve a marriage to this most amazing, beautiful person that has so much potential and that just has taught me that God loves me and God loves you. That I just say F it and I want to run away because it's fight or flight. I don't want to fight. I damn sure don't want to stay there either in that F it mentality. So it's important sometimes when y'all are way up here with one another and it doesn't have to be a husband and wife. It could be your homeboy, your homegirl, your baby mama, your baby daddy. Doesn't matter. When we elevate ourselves and we start coming from a point of here, hypersensitivity, it sometimes can lead us to the spewing of the mouth, right? The tongue's a very powerful tool. And you know, the tongue's the strongest muscle in the body. Um, let's see. Judson, Merry Christmas. And I hope you have a wonderful new year. Brother, we hope you have a Merry Christmas and a wonderful new year as well. You stay safe out there and it's an honor and a privilege to have you here with us, my brother. Uh, Jesse Lynn, both my partners got off opiates through methadone 17 years ago, and we've been together for almost 21 years. I had an issue with benzotes and sublicone. I might have butchered that. We have two beautiful children. My husband is almost off methadone. What advice would you give a couple that got clean together but are struggling with time spent together? Oh, man. Hmm. Me and Jamie Tall, we didn't really get clean together. You know, me and Jamie Tall met many, many years later. She's got like seven and a half. I'm coming up on seven. I'm going to read it one more time. What advice would you give a couple that got clean together but are still struggling with time spent together? <clears throat> these aren't exam or these are a bunch of examples. These aren't really exacts for you, Jesse. One thing that we do is we pray often. Jamie prays for me all the time and I need to start praying for her more than once a day or twice a day. I would submerge yourself in prayer, right? Pray to the higher power of your understanding. Me personally, we're following Jesus. Um, pray, pray to your higher power, right? So <clears throat> mine a couple days ago, I'm, uh, I'm all aggravated. I hopped in a rental car, um, copped me a rental. And I went up to the casino on Monday, right? And like, I'm like, oh my God, dude, is my marriage over? Like, I'm full of anxiety, depression, mental health. I'm like, can I really deal with this? I had the effort mentality, right? And I'm driving and I turned the radio off and it, and it looked a little something like this. Adjust this camera real quick. God, I am struggling and I don't know what to do. I know I love my wife, Jamie Tall, but I know that I can't deal with this. Can you please provide both of us comfort? Can you please allow us to rationalize and maybe equalize the turmoil inside of us? So for me, I pray. Pray for my wife. Pray for others. Sometimes, like when I first got into this whole prayer thing, everybody thinks I'm like batshit crazy, right? And I'm still new in my faith, right? So don't get it twisted. I'm, uh, I sometimes get frustrated because Jamie's so far in hers, right? Like she can hear and she can see and she can feel and all this stuff that like sounded make believe in the beginning, but it doesn't anymore. So I would say pray, Jesse. I would say a lot of prayer. I would say go to some counseling. I tell Jamie, I don't even want to pay. You want me to pay $120 an hour for this dude to listen to my problems? And she says to me, honey, what's an hour? What's $120 an hour if it's going to make you a better version of yourself for the rest of your life? Right. Shauna says, me too. Ariel in the house again. Make the moments you spend together positive ones. Do stuff you love. Go for a walk together. Watch the sunset or go out to eat. Watch a movie. Put phones down and spend quality time. Let me say it again. Put the phone down and spend quality time. Ariel, actually, we need to take your advice. I appreciate that so much, sister. 
Um, as content creators, we have about 14 platforms total. We have, uh, I think it's four Facebooks, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and we're doing some other stuff, right? So we have so many different streams of content that we're constantly, where's this thing at? We're constantly doing this or we're constantly doing this because I mean, we're getting a whole bunch of comments. We're, we're, we're trying to actively engage put that phone down and spend quality time together. Ariel, I love it. Yes. Thank you so much. <clears throat> God didn't say F it when he saved you. He worked hard on us and never gave up. So don't give up on yourself. Don't you ever give up on yourself. Don't you ever give up on yourself. If you take one word from me today, when you walk out of this live or you listen to this at a later date, I challenge you just like our sister Ariel right here says, don't give up on yourself because then you have the effort mentality. When the effort mentality becomes in the into your realm, then evil spirit, devil, torment, that that stuff between my ears. Oh my God, they don't care. Why am I even here? Oh my God. Ah. Right? God never gave up on you. God was there the whole entire time. The only thing is I realized that I was too busy to listen. I didn't sit still long enough to care. I was so busy with the day to day, the mundane, the clean, the clean, the dishes, the wipe the floor, the clean, the windows, the take care of the kid. The God was there the whole entire time. Amy, hi from Minnesota. Sister, I know you're cold. It's going to be like 18 degrees up here in Georgia in a couple of days. I don't even I can't even imagine Minnesota right now. Glad to have you all the way from the great state of Minnesota. I'll have six years sober from alcohol in April. I am going through the toughest time of my life and I want to have a drink. Any advice? Um, pray. Try your best to count your little blessings, right? Because sometimes we, we shy away from our little blessings. A little blessing is I do have six years. A little blessing could be, you know, the things that I prayed for when I had nothing led me to where I'm at. Try to find strength in something. Try to check out some videos. Um, uh, one of our sisters previously said, listen to some worship music. Um, read the book of God. Um, do things that you like to do. Go out and, and just try to clear clear your thoughts. Uh, have an event partner is huge for me. I don't, like I said, I don't got many people up here in, in Georgia because I don't know. The hood rat in me has a hard time differentiating fakes from snakes. People that are solid versus a fake. Right. So find a vent partner. Keep in touch with that vent partner. Mary in the house. Hey there, Mary. Glad to have you here. Uh, Ariel, you would have. <laughs> oh, yeah. You would have spent 120 on drugs. So why not spend it on therapy? Oh, yeah. Let's see. A hundred. That would have been six for the that would have been six for the hunt. And then a twenty dollar piece of rock. I would have done the rock first and had a bunch of bags only to wake up sick the next day and technically one day behind. So $120 on therapy is actually a good investment. You know, another one he told me too, because I'm going to be honest with y'all. I sort of kind of got my ass out of shape. I'm like 6'4", 265, uh, I don't even know, 38 inch waist, right? He said, go to the gym. So Planet Fitness, they got like this $10 a month thing. It's $120 for a year. And I'm like, damn, bro, that's a good investment because I'm paying you $120 for the hour. So you mean I can have a whole year's worth of gym access for $120? So for me, um, for me, it's something that was very important for me. So I'm going to get in the gym, start eating my vitamins, my vegetables, and I'm hoping one day I can get my son in that. Shauna, that's what I tell myself. Chris Cotner, what it is. How you doing, brother? Glad you're here with us. Um... Really, you people in Canada fix the mental health system. It's a mess. I think the mental health system everywhere. I don't I don't know if they actually don't have a mess in anywhere. I mean, that's an ever growing issue that's been, you know, not really formulated a game plan. They just something that we're dealing with. Chris, happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, brother. A, um, Ariel, the devil feeds off of the effort mentality. The devil loves it. Yes, because it leads to confusion. I get that. I get that effort mentality like, oh, you don't love me. You don't care about me. You want to try me. You want to talk to me some type of way. You want to do me like that. It's all confusion. 
It's all of the enemy. When you get confused, when you get butt hurt, when you get in your feelings and you're feeling some type of way and you start talking this, that or the other, um, it can definitely lead to it. So that effort mentality, I totally agree, is of the devil. Um, Amy, negative two. I'm going to have to come visit Minnesota in the summer. I've never seen negative two. Florida boys only seen about, uh, I think, 17 degrees was the coldest I've ever seen. It's going to be 12 here on Thursday. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Ariel, 28 in Michigan right now. Got my fuzzy socks on. Ariel, I got my socks on too. They're not too fuzzy though. I had to show you that real quick. Glad to have you all here. Uh, Jesse Lynn, take it one day at a time for sure. Take it one second at a time. Take it one minute at a time. I don't care how long you take it, right? But sometimes we have to break things up a little bit in order to overcome the things that we're, we're dealing with. Um, son, can you turn that down? Just one or two clicks. Um, sorry, my son's in here jamming out with me. We usually jam out when we're not on live. Um, uh, me too. Thank you, Amy. It's, it's, it's really glad to have y'all. Thank y'all so much for, for taking part in this live. Um, your communication with each other has been great. I'm from Oromoco too. I don't know. I butchered that. I'm so sorry. One thing I can't do is spell or read. Uh, First Nation in New Brunswick, Canada. We know it's cold up there too, huh? Um, mental health is at an all-time high. Yes. I think it's because it's went untreated for so long. It hasn't been recognized for so long. You're just an addict, Adam. Yeah, well, it's actually underlying mental health from abandonment, PTSD, trauma-related. Like most, most of my stuff was all mental health. You know, that's why I started smoking weed in seventh grade and rolling on ecstasy or, or MDMA, I guess, at the time by 16 and sniffing cocaine by 17 and trafficking drugs by 18 and thinking I was a gangster in them streets for forever and ever. Mental health is definitely at an all time high. What advice do you have for building a happy routine? I mean, first for me is 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 doing a gratitude list. Right. Like I wake up every morning. I do a gratitude list um, with my homeboy, Justin. I share a gratitude list. Some things for me and I haven't really done it lately, but in the earlier stages, say the two year mark of my recovery, um, something that I used to do to build a happy routine. And I kid you not, is I would wake up right at an early time, like some ridiculous time, 430, 530. And I didn't have anything to do at the time. The number one thing that made me happy, and this is going to sound weird. I turned this off or, or I didn't, I didn't answer this. I didn't look at this. I set a timer on my oven for 30 minutes. I would be conscious 30 minutes before I let the social media and all the, all the everything get in there because it allowed me to spend time. I listened to a lot of emotional motivational videos at the time I was smoking cigarettes. Now I'm on these little silly things. You're sticking your lip and you know, you don't have to whatever but I would watch motivational videos. It would allow me 30 minutes to myself. I would talk to God or so I thought, cause I didn't have a relationship necessarily until I really met Jamie tall. And she told me that Jesus is real. God is real. And he loves you. Um, I spent a lot of time with myself, but my biggest thing is I would just submerge myself in YouTube videos, right? Like motivational speaking. Um, there's so many great videos out there. Um, if y'all have not seen Denzel Washington's put God first video, I highly suggest that one. Denzel Washington put God first video. Um, the enemy gets his ideas from what we say. Yeah, I totally agree. He's always listening. I mean, he knows scripture better than anybody, right? He knows how to work you, how to prick your bubble that's about to burst, how to get between your ears and tell you you're worthless and you're useless. And sometimes it'll come through the, the, the words of others, but it's distorted in the way that we hear it. Sometimes my wife, Jamie Tall, is actually crying out to me for help. But the way that she words it, because she's an Italian from Sicily, it doesn't necessarily sound like that when I misinterpret, because the devil's already in there playing with the stuff between my ears. So what she really said was this totally meant something completely different, which affected my depression and my mental health. Um, Amy, it's so cold. I would have to agree with that. 
Um, say affirmations to yourself in the morning. Yes. Listen to motivational speech and start your day off right. Did you know the first 30, 40 minutes of your day sets the pace for the rest of the day? So one thing I realized, and I'm starting to practice this now again, is I have to not touch this thing, right? Because we get 17,000 comments, 28,000 reactions a month. We're, we're so grateful for y'all and the outreach and the growth in our content. Um, but sometimes people be running them gums, right? And I just want to drive to wherever and go smack the dude that doesn't have his real name, real picture, no photos kind of mentality, right? Because I let the enemy get into me. So I have to stay in solid. I have to stay in my own little box, my own little bubble. I have to prep myself for battle. The enemy is going to come against you in so many ways, shapes and forms. The enemy is going to try to knock you off your game. The enemy is going to try to take your happiness from you. The enemy is going to try to steal your faith, rob you of good feelings, uh, affect and hinder the ability for you to count your little blessings. Did you count your little blessings today? Like for real, I'm on a computer that I couldn't have bought in a million years if I was still out there in them streets because it would have ended up at the pawn shop. I'm on a really cool looking camera. I chipped my tooth on the last time. I was able to go to the dentist and get my tooth fixed. Like I'm not counting none of that. I'm too busy in my lane trying to do all this stuff, trying to let other people's attitudes depend, make my altitude dependent on it. Um, Audra, I think she might have tagged somebody. Courtney, if you're in here already, thank you so much for joining us. A big heart from Jacqueline. Big heart back at you, sister. Um, Amy, mental health is an issue for me too. Yes. What kind of mental health do y'all suffer with? Um, Uh-oh. My wife remotely. <coughs> Honey, I love you. Glad you're here. Hope I'm uh, hope I'm making it happen. Uh, praise and worship music helps me tons. Yes, praise and worship music. Hey, can y'all give me like 15 seconds real quick? I'm about to start sweating my tail off because the heat's on. I'm gonna crack this window real quick. Don't mind me. I'm in my pajamas. There we go. Much better. Sorry about that, y'all. Tiffany, yes, we appreciate you, sister. Glad to have you with us. It is an honor and a privilege to have all of y'all here. If y'all are just joining us, we're discuss discussion. The discussion is on depression and mental health, primarily during the holidays. Um, I am my name is Adam. I am the husband of Jamie Tall. Um, if y'all found us on Facebook, please find us on everything social media. Um, hashtag Jamie Tall. Um, let's see here. We are Ariel. I use timers. I set 20 or 30 minute timer to stay focused and journal or just clean and do yoga and meditate. Yes. So I need to start meditating. Definitely some more prayer and meditation. Right. You know, when somebody first talked about meditation to me, it was my homeboy, JP, um, my homeboy Palmer and Palmer's like, bro, it's like this. So you close your eyes. Right. And then you're going to try not to think of anything. And what's going to happen is it's like you're on a train, right? You know, when you ride the subway or the train and it's and it's going by you. So you, instead of letting something get to you, you have to let it go by you. So I, here's here's what it looks like for me. Man, did I did I do the laundry? Did I did I pay that bill? Man, I wonder what Jamie's going to want for dinner. Like you have to literally try to think of nothing. Right. So sometimes I learned in breathing technique, once you can control your breathing, it'll actually allow your thought process to allow you to meditate better. Keep in mind, I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice. Abel, I'm on the run from Arizona, but I'm clean now for the first time facing eight years and facing eight years. Please pray for me. All right, Abel. Well, man, let's do it right now. Right. Um, God, please be with Abel as he is dealing with his things um, from Arizona. Continue to comfort him on his journey and allow him to proceed with caution and the outcome to be at your will. We sometimes under don't understand it, but we know that whatever you have in store for us is, is best in Jesus name. Amen. Um, I'm praying for you, bro. Um, Tiffany, I try to pray in my mind. 
It's hard, but necessary. Sister, I am right there with you. Prayer is necessary, but boy, is it hard, right? So sometimes we have to simplify it. They have it. They, they call it the kiss method. Keep it simple, right? Sometimes in the beginning, it, and, and no matter what we do, we're working on our fitness. We're trying to lose weight. We're trying to learn how to pray. We're trying not to be mean to our, our, our lover, our spouse, our partner, right? Whatever you're into. Sometimes baby steps. Take baby steps. I try to pray in my mind, but it's hard. It's going to be hard. Tiffany, it's totally normal. I, I can challenge you to just stay with it. Stay at it. It takes 21 days to form a habit. I can, I, I can vouch for this. Once you get in the habit, once you get in the routine of it, it won't be no big deal. And then you'll be able to pray for others as well. Um, Audra, the enemy can't read our thoughts. It's when we speak it out loud that gives him a foothold. Yes, he can probably hear it better. You know, sometimes I think he's in my head all the time. But it's what I choose to do with the thoughts, you know, Abel. Yeah, the phone's been messing up on me late, lately. If I ain't learning or something useful, trying to watch, trying to watch it, YouTube, social media will take up your time. Yeah, social media is actually a good and a bad thing. Right. Social media, if you're actually using it for the development of yourself, if you're learning it to learn how to pray, learn how to cook, learn how to whatever, lose weight, learn how to fix your credit. Right. The only thing is, I think it's been designed a little bit to keep us busy. Right. Keep us confused. Keep us so engulfed in shit that don't matter. That sometimes we forget what matters to us for ourselves to get better. We heard the sermon. Jamie was uh, playing this as we came back home from Christmas cookies at her mom's over the weekend. And this guy was saying that 80 percent of Americans have neck and back problems because they're doing this. Hey, real quick, I don't know if y'all think this is funny, but every time Jamie gets mad at me, oh, is it going to be there? It says you've got good taste. It's a public sticker. Every time she gets mad at me, I'm like, baby, you got good taste. Um, Amy, I have fallen into such a deep, deep depression that I can't leave the house. My anxiety is, is ridiculous. Amy, I'm, I'm going to pray for you, sister. You know, sometimes we just have to slowly, slowly pick apart the things that are causing it. You know, for me, it's underlying trauma, stress, stuff like that. Um, Audra can't wait to hear her testimony at ATO SNL with, oh yeah, for sure. It's coming. I think they have a date. Audra, do you know if they have a date? Y'all make sure y'all check out. Um, I believe it's against the odds recovery ministry, um, with Phil Tyler. Um, I've been watching him for a while and, uh, he's got some, he's got some really good stuff. Um, you can also check him out in recovery inspired hope, the group on Facebook, I'm um, going to be a great interview. Looking forward to it. I have a, I have a huge diagnosis of mental health. It's hard to talk about the reasons behind all the things that contribute to my mental health. You know, it was for me in the beginning too, but sometimes it's easier to let go of it than to hold on to it. And that sounds weird because I got trust issues, but like I started talking, you know, to like my counselor. You know, we taught, we went in there yesterday and, you know, um, Jamie Tall went first and she got done. And I'm like, and he's like, well, Adam, how da, 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 da. I'm like, bro, I don't even want to talk to you, bro. Like after what I just, I just had to go through all this stuff for the last however long. And now we're back in here and I'm paying you all this money. I don't want to talk to you, but sometimes it's important to try to talk to people. Um, Ariel, breathing techniques are so good. You know where I learned breathing techniques? This is going to be, this is going to be crazy. In jail, they had a book about breathing techniques because I couldn't sleep. I'm closing my, I'm closing my eyes and my ears. All the fellow good decision makers around me are still running their gums till 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Everybody's on the slide um, on their slides, clacking on the floor, going to use the restroom 20 times a night. I learned that bra the breathing technique actually slows the heartbeat. So then when it slows the heartbeat and the blood is not pump, 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 it gives you an option or, or the possibility to, calm your mind. So first from the book that I was reading, the technique was to calm the heart and calm the pulse rate. It's basically slow it down. 
then it goes into the mind so that you can slow the mind down. And then it actually started working. So I just kept doing it. Shine and says, amen. Amen back at you. Glad to have you here. Barry Scott, God bless you all. Have a great day. Barry, I appreciate you, brother. So glad to have you here with us. Um, Tiffany, I have court tomorrow with my child's father. Could I get some prayer also? I am sober. My child's father is not, and it's affecting my son. I only want what's best for my son. I had to call the police yesterday because my son came home with drug paraphernalia on him. I had to call the police. I'm just trying to keep our child safe. Am I wrong? Sister, you are not wrong. There ain't nothing wrong in the whole world but wanting to keep them babies safe. Um, let's go ahead and do this now real quick because um, we're going to be closing up here in about 10 more minutes. Anybody else need prayer? Go ahead and get in the comments and we will make sure we get you taken care of before we depart for you. God, I just want you to be with Tiffany. Um, she's She's dealing with a lot of stuff and she's not sure how to handle it. I can sense... Um, a major amount of overwhelming sensation, Lord. Try to allow her to possess the ability to calm herself, the ability to focus on one task at a time, the ability to push the worries that are too big for her onto you because we can't handle everything. Sometimes I can't handle anything, God, which is one of the reasons I'm on this live today. So I just pray for Tiffany. I pray for court tomorrow. I pray for her, her child. I pray that the drug paraphernalia thing at some point will be able to work itself out and that we will accept the outcome of everything. Um, I just want to pray for Sister Tiffany. Allow her to get some rest and allow her not to worry so much. Let her cast her worries upon you. And uh, we say all this in Jesus name. Amen. Got a tear in my eye for you, sister. Um, Abel, thank you again for your support. Abel, we got you, man. We appreciate you so much. Uh, Amy, I need prayer. Talk to me, Amy. Let's get you, let, let's, let's get you prayed up before I, before I get on out of here. If any of y'all want to get in the comments, give me a brief description of what's going on. I would love to pray for you, um, before we depart today. Um, I'll, I'll start coming on every single day, um, at least Monday through Friday for the next few weeks to see how this goes and continues. Um, and just thank you guys so much for being here. I do recovery meetings seven nights a week, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's the password, share hope. We recover from so much more than drugs and alcohol, depression, suicide attempts, anxiety, childhood trauma, sin, and in my case, um, amputations. All are welcome to come join us. Sister, thank you so much for putting that in. I'm going to leave that up. Excuse me. Sorry, I got a case of the burps here at the end of the live. I'm going to leave that up for you, um, for y'all, just for a couple more seconds. If y'all want to grab that password and, and join our sister in those recovery meetings. Does anybody else need any anything I can pray for anyone else? Before we get going, me and my son have a laundry list of things to achieve. Don't mind me. Gummy worm for breakfast. What can we do for you? Just get in the inbox real quick. If not, get in the comments if this is a replay. If y'all are not seeing this on December 19th, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, get in the comments. Let us know this was a replay. She says, my inbox is open for anyone who needs a friend. Please reach out to me. We can pray and chat. I'm available all day and mostly all night. I lost both legs and in bed with my phone always. Thank you, sister. Talk about counting your blessings. I talked about counting, man, this is getting me emotional. Counting your small blessings. This woman right here is a perfect example of counting small blessings. My sister lost her legs, right? She's laid up in the bed, right? She's putting on recovery meetings seven days a week. She just told y'all to reach out to her. She's counting her little blessings. Whew. If y'all do anything today, count your blessings. Thank you for sharing, Audra. Um, I would love to maybe chat with you on the phone one time, me, you and Jamie talk and get a collective or a Zoom or something. I would love 
to meet you. And if you ever want to tell your story, I think it would be a powerful story that could change the world. We would love to have you come on the show and do a YouTube video. Make sure y'all follow us on Jamie Tall on YouTube. Thank you, brother. God bless you and amen. Tiffany, I want you to stay strong out there today, Tiffany. I want you to give your worries to God today, Tiffany. I want you to understand that the weight of the world isn't designed for you to carry. It's the, the weight of the world is designed for you to give the things that are too heavy, give your burdens to something bigger than you. I want you to stay prayed up. I want you to stay hopeful and faithful. And I know that's a lot. And I know that might seem overwhelming. And I know that might seem like a mountain that you can't climb or that's too hard or it's too high or it's going to take too much or I got too much shit going on, stuff going on to overcome it. But Tiffany, I want you to stay, stay prayed up. Um, inbox me, sis. I'd love to help you and support anybody. Get at, get at this amazing lady. You know what I'm saying? I think she's got a bunch to offer. It's an honor and a privilege. Audra to have you on the show today. Um, my mental health is affecting everything in my life. Sister, we were right there with you. Amy, maybe if you could get with Audra, I think that she might be able to provide some insight, um, like woman to woman. You know, I'm only here to give advice. It's a lot easier for me to, to recommend stuff for a man because I come from a little bit more of a rah, rah, rah with the guys to say it with your chest kind of thing with nurturing in the back. My wife's amazing with y'all with, with the females here in the group. It's an honor and a privilege to have every, every single one of you here. So Amy, consider getting with Audra. Um, that would be great. Amy, Amy said that I would love to talk to her. So go ahead and grab her name while she's on the screen. Um, and then maybe you can hit her up on messenger, you know, Mission achieved, right? If I didn't do anything, if y'all didn't say any, if I didn't say anything, y'all didn't hear any good things from me. I just put potentially two people together that can help each other grow. That's what this is about. That's what, that's what this is about. It's about helping people, right? Just like God wants us to help each other. Um, I'm honored, brother. Hey, I'm honored to have the participation from you, sis. I mean, you seem like you're just in it to win it. I can, I can, I can just feel a good vibe from you. You know, the whole amputee in the bed thing still going to make something decent of myself, no matter what, I'm still going to do service work, no matter what, I'm still going to do God's work, no matter what, I'm still going to help each other. Even though sometimes you probably feel helpless, but what a better way to counteract a helpless feeling than to go out and help somebody go out there and help somebody today. Not because y'all got to family because you want to, there's a difference. Um, amen. Good God bless. Stay strong and thank you all. Peace be to everyone. Thank you for the invite to those meetings. Stay strong. Blessings rule. Just like you say, just like you stay true. Keep stay true to yourself, family. That's all you can. Uh, yes, sis, please inbox me. Look at that. She's already ready for you. Um, Beth, not alone. Let's see. Um, you're awesome. Thank you. Amen and praise God. I survived a hundred blood clots and I'm thankful to be alive. Oh my goodness, sister. This is, I want to talk to you after she's done talking to you because this is, this is just incredible. We got a minute and a half left before this hour. I'm going to turn one or two of these fancy studio lights off. So don't mind if it goes a tad bit more dark on us. And I just want to end this in prayer, right? For, for everybody watching, make sure y'all hit replay. If you're watching the replay, make sure y'all check out Jamie Tall on YouTube. Where's it at? There it go. There it go. Jamie Tall on YouTube. Make sure y'all check it out. If you're on Facebook, consider donating the free stars that Facebook gives you. All right, let's take it. God, thank you for today. Thank you for this live. Thank you for the interaction of the people. Lord, I want you to be with a person that's struggling. I want you to be with a person that needs to hear your voice the most. I want you to be with me and my wife, Jamie Tall, as we continuously go against the enemy in order to achieve the blessings of God. You know, you told me, Lord, and I heard so much, first seek the kingdom of heaven and everything else will follow. Please allow me to continuously seek and search and find God allow the folks on this live to just overcome the things that they're dealing with. I want to pray for people's depression to dissolve. I want to pray for mental health 
to alleviate and to the ability to count their small blessings. Lord, we know sometimes in our small blessings that we're too busy to acknowledge you or the blessing itself. So I ask you to humble us, allow us to gain strength in one another, allow us to be nice to one another, allow us to care for one another, allow us to be nicer to the person next to us than sometimes we are to ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow with a new subject. If y'all want to hear about anything, holler at us, put it in the comments on YouTube, and we'll see you real soon. Be safe out there today. Love y'all.